Join us for 121 days of 5M prayer starting February 1st, June 1st, 2022. Connect with Queen of Collaborations on Linktree. Don't miss this opportunity to be a blessing. Everything he do was big and big enough for Every time he move, he moved to bless us He's a good God, he never left us Jesus is the best, the best, the best us Every time we pray, it's yes, it's yes, us We gon' do right and we ain't gon' go left We gon' serve God and we gon' stay blessed We gon' go hard and Jesus, we rest We ain't gotta stress, he paid all our debts We gon' stay lit and we gon' stay kept Hey, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of Up Close and Personal with Angela on behalf of Aspiring Authors Magazine. Of course, I am Angela Thomas Smith. I am the founder of AALAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign. I am also the CEO of Aspiring Authors Magazine, where my desire is to bridge the gap between brown authors all over this world and to touch on topics that's affecting our brown community. So of course, last month and a half, we have been sharing amazing brown individuals across this world, um, bringing them to the forefront, sharing them with you guys because they represent some amazing brands, some amazing platforms, and they're doing some amazing work. So I wanted to bring them to the forefront so today, I tell you, we have um, another amazing um, woman of faith. Um, she is um, a radio personality. She's the host of News Forum over on O&E Dynasty. She is a holistic doctor. Um, she is a advocate for um, injustice. Um, wrongfully incarcerated, overly incarcerated, um, you name it. Um, this woman is um, definitely doing it. Um, she is definitely for human rights. Um, I have the privilege of working with her on Owen the Dynasty. Um, I've also had the opportunity to work with her, a part of Aspiring Octaves magazine that she's um, contributed a couple articles over there. So I want you guys to take this opportunity to share this broadcast in your circle of influence. Um, like always, you never know what the next person may need or someone that may cross your path, but may need something that is coming from this young lady on today. So I know a lot of you are probably questioning um, what was that video about? So um, while I'm waiting for my guests to come um in the backstage, um, I'm going to share with you guys exactly what that video was about. It's about the 121 days of prayer that's coming up February the 1st through June the 1st for you guys um, that are not familiar with um, the Learn, Love, Lead movement. It's called the L3 movement. We are the change that we desire to see that um, actually was created from the Soul for Metamorphosis um, book project that's going to release on December the 7th. I know y'all are like, how did all of this come about from a book? That's not but I'm here to tell you guys and to share with you guys um, exactly. Um, I'm waiting for my guest. I, I thought she was backstage. Um, but this is the book. Um, that launched um, the L3 movement, 402 pages of um, affirmations, prayer, and scriptures. Um, we stood on Psalms 121, um, look to the hills from which my help cometh. And I definitely um, thank God for this opportunity to work with um, those 138 women um, that were a part of this project. Okay, I think I have my amazing um, guest backstage now. I'm going to give her an opportunity to get set up so I can go ahead and bring her up um, so she can share just a little bit about herself and um, how we can support all of the amazing things that she's doing. Um, so I'm going to move out the way and um, bring her up. 
and allow her to introduce herself and uh, share exactly who she is and what she's doing to impact her com her community and to make a difference. So without further ado, um, Dr. Chinchilla Jonicia, um, better known as Dr. Chinchilla J. Hi, good morning, Angela. How are you? Hello. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, it's uh, good How to be you? here. I'm fine, and it's good to be here today. And um, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I am Chinchilla Joe Nisi, as Angela said, aka Chinchilla J. Also, Dr. C. And um, people call me a lot of things too. Um, but uh, what I do, I do so many things, so many things. But uh, I'm going to get into a little bit of each of the things I do. But I just want everybody to know the main focus right now, the main thing that I do and I have been doing every single day, day in and day out now for like a year is wrongful convictions, um, advocating for the wrongfully incarcerated, advocating for exonerees uh, in the state of Pennsylvania to receive compensation. Uh, I've been doing that now for about eight years, but every single day advocating for the wrongfully convicted um, because in this country, wrongful incarcerations, oh my goodness, they're just through the roof. And people really don't realize how many people are actually wrongfully behind bars. We hear a lot of people, you know, people will say, you know, well, I, I'm wrongfully convicted. I didn't do this crime. But we know that everybody that cries innocence are not innocent. But there are definite red flags uh, in cases and uh, all types of evidence in cases that were not brought out in the trial, that proves innocence to people that are wrongly behind bars. And it's just an overwhelming number of people, Angela. And it's so very sad. And every time someone is wrongfully convicted, it not only affects the wrongfully incarcerated inmate, but it also infects, affects and infects their entire family. So I call it the effect, effects, and infect, okay? Because it does all that, okay? Uh, so it disrupts families. It destroys families. And this is so very sad because you look at the most uh, populated people that are wrongfully behind bars as well as rightfully behind bars are people of color, okay? Black people, brown people. And um, and I like when you... Uh, you uh, say brown, okay? Because we are brown. We're not black. Like black is this thing back here on my wall, okay? We are brown. So so uh, the most populated group of people are us behind the bars. And it, it's so very sad. And you, you see that, okay, yeah, some are behind there because they did the crime and they have to do the time. But then we have an, oh my God, a substantial amount of men and women wrongfully incarcerated that do not belong there and because of their skin color they're there and uh because of their skin color they have been framed blamed uh they have been uh like fallen prey to a corrupt injustice system and it's so very sad and they're behind bars a lot of them because they're poor and or because the uh these so-called law enforcement people and these so-called court systems and the people that work in the courtroom, which I call crooks and cons, okay? And, you know, crooks, cons, goons, goblins, and demons, uh, because that's what they are, okay? Um, these are people that the Bible talks about, you know, that, you know, in Ephesians 6, 10, you know, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and it's so true. We don't wrestle against that because this is a spiritual battle and we're dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places. We're dealing with the rulers of the darkness of this world. And those are the people in power, the politicians, the government, the judges, the prosecutors, uh, the defense attorney, and even the jurors, because jurors, for the most part, are the ones that bring down that guilty conviction. And some of them is based upon evidence they heard or evidence that they did not hear. 
And if they're not given a full story, yes, some of them going to come back with a guilty verdict. And if they are not um, provided with evidence to actually prove guilt beyond a shadow of a doubt, they're actually supposed to come back with an innocent verdict. But they don't. They don't. They allow the prosecutor to paint a picture of a bad criminal when a whole lot of these wrongfully convicted individuals are not even criminals. They've had good upbringing and they were prominent in their communities, but yet they were just taken away and arrested for crimes they didn't commit. And there's no evidence. Most of the time it's misidentification. Like the witnesses, they'll say, oh yeah, that person did it. And, and, and they're lying. And most of these witnesses have been coerced by the prosecution. Uh, they've been granted favors or less time for some of their criminal activity. And, you know, then we have, of course, the police that plan evidence. And, you know, a lot wow. of these police departments are so very corrupt. It's sad. And then the corrupt prosecutors that want to win at whatever cause, whatever, whatever, no matter what whatever means necessary, by all means necessary, I want to win. You know, that's their attitude. I got to win this case. And they don't care who they throw behind bars. But like I said, 99% of the time it's brown people. Okay. But I'm sitting here listening to you and I've, I've heard you talk about this often because every Sunday I tune into your show and I listen to you talk about this yes. and I listen to your passion. And I can see the passion that you have mm -hmm. for what you do, but you don't have anybody incarcerated. No, you, you, I don't. you don't have anybody incarcerated and you go so hard. And I look at all of the people that have people behind bars mm -hmm. that may be in their family. It may not be a close relative, but it's someone in their family and they won't even pick up the phone to call a lawmaker to call their legislator mm -hmm. to call their right. governor to make any noise but here you are you have no one incarcerated no strings attached and you go day in and day out and it ain't something that you go lack a daisy about because i, I i've seen you do lives at eight nine and ten o'clock at night because you know call mm -hmm. me into some of them Yes I, yes, I see what you're doing, and I'm, I'm, I'm just like a lot of people would be like, "This lady is crazy because she don't even have nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody attached to her," and you going like that. But you know what? I have the same passion for what I do because you want to see these people free, and yes. then not only that, I, I listen to a lot of these stories. A, a lot of and, and they're not even stories because these are these people experience right yes this is they journey it's, it's, it's nothing that's mm -hmm. made up this is it's right facts this is what's happening right now in the here and now so yes. I, I listen to this and I and I hear it and then I come across people that this is their journey or this has been their journey you know, I, I, I'm on Clubhouse and I have a young lady that is a junior domestic violence advocate that she could have been well on the other side of that fence and trying to fight for her innocence. But she had to go through four years of being locked up to prove that mm. she was innocent. Um, she was um, acquitted of murder. Okay. And... um. When I tell you she suffered for four years and the evidence was clear that this woman was a victim of domestic violence, all mm. of the police calls, all of the records, but you take her through a four year trial and you allow this lady to get drugged through the mud. Young. She was young. She was about 18 or 19 when this happened. That's so sad. She just spoke out about it. This is her first, her, her first time really speaking out about it was um, right before she came on my show. Okay. And wow. Um, 10 years, she never spoke out about it. And she allowed people to drag her through the mud and call her all kind of names. They labeled this young lady the, the Mother's Day Killer. 
and and drug her through the mud. She had to she she endured that. Mm. But that, that was her journey. She had to go through that. And I look at all these people that they're behind bars and, and this is their same story. And, yes. and, and they were not able to be acquitted. And then I look right. at I look at these young people that make these decisions when they're young. They're young. Yeah. Their, their mind is not at a state of making rational decisions. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm the most um I, I'm the most unrational, irrational person. I, I, I make spur the moment decisions. So you know, sometimes I have to be mindful of what I'm doing because I've always mm -hmm. been like that. Yeah, me too. But I, I, I've right, had to right. realize that those irrational and spur the moment rational decisions like that could cost somebody their life and, and, yeah. and things like that. And we don't think about that when we're young. Right. Because I wasn't thinking about that when I was 18 and 19. I was just living life and living it to the fullest. Because I'm going to yes. tell you, when you go through stuff and you get freedom, you 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 do stuff that you weren't used to doing. So then mm -hmm. your mind is not there. So I, right. I, I question why we we living with laws from the 50s and, and, and 60s yeah. before we were even free. So how can yeah. these laws apply to us and we were not even free at that time. And and, mm. and y'all still can uphold that and say that that's justice and that's humanly right. You know, we didn't that's even have right. rights as humans. That's right. So how can you hold us accountable for laws that you created before we were even free, before you even recognized us as a human? Mm -hmm. But they don't think about that. And then everybody wants us to be hush hush. Everybody wants us to be quiet. Everybody wants us to fall into line. Them days up. Yeah. I thank you so much for what you're doing because I look at my friend Pam, that's a part of my um collaboration project. Her mm -hmm. husband is car incarcerated up in New York. And he's been incarcerated since he was 19 years old. And you have to know the background of his story. You got to know what his childhood was. You have these people that grow up and, and 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 all they know is to be drug dealers, to be in the street at, at seven and eight and nine years old. They yeah. running drugs and they running money and this is all they know. So right. when you put in a situation as a teenager, you put in a situation where your life is at danger and you got to fend for your life or or or, or that other person's life. Who life you going who life you gonna save? Your own. Mm, mm, mm. So that that that's a lot of what a lot of people are facing. I, I look at a lot of our brown people, our bro our brown males that are behind bars right now. Yes, yes. A lot of them are under 25. And mm -hmm. the ones that have been in for a long time, if you add the amount of time that they've been in to when they got incarcerated, they were 18, 19, 17 years old when they got locked up. Their mind was not there, and they've mm -hmm. been incarcerated all that time. Some of them are in their fifties. Do you not think that they have evolved in some way? And do you not think if somebody's in their fifties or their sixties, do you really think that they're going to get out there and do the same thing? They ain't can't, who they finna rob in fifty and sixty. Who, who, who they finna gang bang with at 50 and 60? This is the time when they need to be trying to get themselves together for whatever time we got left here. You know what I'm saying? And nobody mm -hmm. thinks about doing no foolishness, but they don't even they, they they don't even they don't even think about that. Right. Yes. And then, sad thing. And then sad what's thing. what's going on with the rehabbing? This is supposed to be a place of rehab. Why 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 are they not being rehabbed? Why has it turned into a nothing but a slave market? If you mm -hmm. ask me. Yeah, it's what I call uh, the prison system, a whole prison system, a modern day slavery. Um, because the reason why so many of uh, us are behind bars for extended periods of time and being over sentenced, uh, that's another thing. You know, we get uh, heavier sentences thrown at us than our counterparts uh, and, and you know for the same crime okay you can have a black person get a sentence of 25 years uh for one crime and then here comes a white person same crime they may only get probation i've seen it happen where they got probation you know community service and didn't do no time 
you know, or maybe five years, okay, and, you know, get probation after two years. You know, it, it's just so ridiculous to get paroled after two years. And it, it, it's so very sad. And um, as you were talking about uh, young kids, uh, teenagers uh, getting arrested, you know, there's some, of course, that there's a lot of kids out here that do do crimes. They make mistakes, like especially now with all this black on black crime uh, within the black communities, um, you know, but then a lot of them are not even going to jail because nobody wants to say who did it, even though they know who killed somebody. They don't want to say anything because they're afraid of what may happen that, you know, they may come after them for speaking out, which is a sad thing. But then you have the juveniles, well, not juveniles, because there's a, a guy I'm advocating for now in Pittsburgh. Well, he's his case is in Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh's in Pennsylvania, but he's a Philadelphia uh, native, and uh, he's incarcerated. He's been incarcerated now for four decades, and uh, his name is Mutia Jamu uh, Usabero, and um, he says juvenile is not the right terminology because when uh, the government say juvenile, it's like they're not looking at the person as a child. So um, all of these children that have been wrongfully incarcerated um, at the age of 15, 16, 17 for crimes they didn't commit and then spend all of these years behind bars, he was arrested at 17 for a crime he did not commit. And he's been in there for four decades and the case is just so very sad. And, you know, and now, uh, you know, while he's been in there, he's like turned into a uh, political prisoner. Um, and it, it's just so very sad. And then you have um, a guy named uh, um, Arthur Johnson, uh, Chetaweo. He spent 51 years wrongfully behind bars and 37 of those years he spent consecutively 37 consecutive years in solitary confinement okay and uh he was released um in august no july was it july august either july or august one of those uh i get, lose track of these months now but anyway he just got out just a couple months ago, a few months ago. And it's like, you know, the first thing I asked him, I said, how did you stay sane? 37 years in the hole. How? How did you stay sane? A and I said, it had to be by the grace of God. And he said, through prayer, uh, working out, exercising in his little small hole he was in. And, you know, but he gives it all to God, you know, through prayer. And, you know, and this man, 51 years, five decades behind bars for a crime he didn't commit. And see, it, here in the state of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is one of 13 states that do not compensate those that they have wrongfully incarcerated. So mm -hmm. these men that have been exonerated in Pennsylvania, they don't get a cent from Pennsylvania at all. And so uh, we've been fighting for a compensation bill to be passed here now. I've been fighting since uh, for about eight years now. And then we have uh, Pennsylvania historical exoneree Vincent Moto, um, who is the first person I have ever known to be wrongfully incarcerated. Because before I met him, I didn't even think, you know, about wrongfully convicted people. I didn't know anybody wrongfully convicted. So I never heard of anybody actually being wrongfully convicted because nobody talked about it. And I met him and he said, hey, I, I was wrongfully convicted for 10 and a half years, you know, and for rape, robbery and conspiracy, okay? And I'm like, what? And I'm saying to myself, hmm, okay. And so, uh, you know, when you hear somebody say that, if you never heard anybody being wrongfully convicted, to keep it real, you may think that, okay, all right, whatever. And it just goes out the other ear. But, you know, he kept talking about his case and I'm like, oh, man, this is horrible for somebody to be wrongfully convicted for 10 and a half years for something they didn't do, to live day in and day out in a jail cell. And, you know, he had kids uh, when he was wrongfully uh, arrested. He had children. And so he was stripped away from his kids, his, his parents and from his friends, uh, lost stock in the granola company that he had 5% stock in. 
uh, lost a very promising job. He had a nice career and a promising future and uh, an awesome uh, musician, songwriter, composer, arranger. And, you know, all of that, 10 and a half years just oh. wiped all of that out. And, and his parents spent over $160,000 in attorney fees. And I'm like, wow. Well, you know, and I'm like, well, in Pennsylvania, don't compensate those that they've wronged. And so he had been going back and forth, back and forth, up to Harrisburg, which is the state capital in Pennsylvania, ever since 1996. Okay, fighting for a compensation bill. And I'm like, whoa, we have to do something. I have to see how I can help. And so that's how I got started um, on, you know, this road I'm on now um, through meeting him and hearing his story and advocating with him for compensation to be passed in Pennsylvania for those who've been exonerated. And then from there, I met so many other wrongfully incarcerated men. And I'm like, whoa. And then I just started looking deeper at this wrongful incarceration stuff. And I'm like, boy, it's not just Pennsylvania, but all over the country that they're wrongfully incarcerated individuals. And um, then when and a lot of it is overly incarcerated, because I, 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 oh, yeah. I look at a lot of um, our brown community and mm -hmm. the type of sentences that they hand out for drug oh, yeah. charges. Oh, I yes. mean, they give drug charges like they murdered somebody, but then you yeah, have, some of them get life. <laughs> you, you, you have some people. Of life. Yeah, I, 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 I got somebody right now that's 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 serving life for drugs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so very eight long. Five years actually, and, and, and that's it's sad because if it's it's if it's a marijuana uh, related charge, there's you know there are so many states now that are going back and looking at these marijuana convic convictions, and you know they're letting them out because for the most part most of the country now have legalized marijuana and so if marijuana now is legalized uh medicinal marijuana recreational marijuana then those people that they arrested for these marijuana uh charges and gave them these hefty sentences uh a lot of them now are uh getting time served or you know just getting some of them are even getting that wiped off their records because now it's not a as big of an issue um and, and uh there are a few states that are doing that like california uh and some other states are are doing that and looking at these cases and no way in the world somebody that's selling weed okay should be serving a life sentence it, it, it's just so very wrong but some but of i these think about it you think about you you you, you think about how they get all these drugs into these communities they you right. know we, we brown people not bringing them in because we don't have no helicopters we don't right. have no planes we don't exactly. have no boats we don't have no the government that. allows all that stuff in this country exactly. you know they get paid off at the border and then they exactly. bring it right in and yeah. then they take it right to our communities mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they allow certain people the opportunity to 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 get to make money while they infect in the community and then exactly. when they get, once they get to a point to where they got to do something about it because let me tell you so i remember back in um it had to be the early 90s right before the olympics mm -hmm. it seemed like everybody in their mama was selling weed and nobody was getting busted it's, I'm talking about everybody and their mama was selling weed and nobody was getting busted. I'm talking about it just, mm -hmm. it seemed like it was just natural. Like that was just it, everybody. When yeah. that, and I'm talking about you walk mm. down the streets in Atlanta during the Olympics, man, you might see people standing on the corner smoking a blunt. <laughs> and when nobody doing nothing and then he come right after the Olympics come through right, right around, I'm going to say had to been around 98 99 2000 that's when mm -hmm. they start cracking down on on, on everything because then crack wow. gonna start crack crack was like man everybody the young folks were smoking crack then mm. they, they they smoking what they call crunchy munches where they was crunching up the crack and, and oh. we, yeah they was making all crunchy kinds munchies. of stuff. Crunchy munchies, you hear rappers well, I talking never about heard of that one, Angela. Crunchy munchies. They was they was cracking up the 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 crack oh. and 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 spreading it over their weed and making it. Yeah, that's back in the day. You didn't you you had to be careful. 
who you smoke with because that's what they was doing. You listen to these rappers when they was talking about Bankhead Highway was was popular back in the day. Um, Bankhead Bounce and um, they had a club out there called Bankhead Bounce. You hear people talking about Blue Flame was in all of the all of the rap songs and um. It was D4L back then, but Shouty Low was one of the rappers. And you will always hear them talking about Skittles, Crunchy Munch, and, mm. and, and that's what they was talking about. Wow. The Skittles was Skittles was um what they called what them pills they be everybody be talking about. Um them 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 different color pills that they had, and they had different um characters, Superman, um all mm-hmm. kind of different pills, honey. Oh, wow. And they just people just be they just be popping them, just be popping. Them. I'm like, why y'all talking about they mm. say however you yeah, honey. That was I forget what they call them because I ain't no I ain't no um I ain't no druggy, so I don't know about it. <laughs> but I just I be hearing it, but I forget what X pills, I think. But they X-Pills. came on the scene. And they had all different kind of flavors, and you would hear you would every time you would see a drug bust, they would have all these thousands and thousands of pills, and they would talk about how many millions of dollars they were worth on the street. But oh, that kind of thing. And everybody wow. was pop, popping pills, and then wow. all of a sudden, you don't hear people talking about those pills no more. You don't hear people. You, you crack is still out there, but you don't hear them talking about. You don't hear them talking about that no more. Right, right. The most thing now we hear about all the time is marijuana. And then the thing with this marijuana, um, you know, it was a time when marijuana was good marijuana, you know, it, it, you know, and what I mean by that is it wasn't like tainted. It wasn't sprayed. It wasn't, uh, there were no chemicals added to it to alter right. the, uh, the quality or the whatever. Of, or of the marijuana but now since it's been legalized uh especially with these medicinal uh uh what do you call them medicinal uh whatever the heck they call them things um all these medicinal uh marijuana places i can't think of the, uh, the right name right now but um these distilleries these um, yeah distilleries yeah yeah distilleries. um so since they're up now all over the place and recreational use is legal most states now. Um, the, the marijuana is not the same because you have people now that are growing marijuana. They're crossbreeding plants and uh, experimenting with different combinations of cannabis, as they call it. And the kind that they are now uh, dispersing into the black communities, you don't know what the heck you're getting. And that's why we see a lot of the young people now. They walk around looking like zombies, some of them, you know, from the the weed that's in those communities now. And then you see some, they they, they smoke these uh, uh, cannabis things that they're getting from these d- dispensaries is what it's called, uh, a dispensary. And um, they may become violent. And you see a lot of violence as like, is on the rise in most of the inner cities now. Uh, black on black crime is like way up, and it has a lot to do with this marijuana now, this cannabis that's legally floating around now. Uh, because now that it's legal, uh, big pharma plays a part in it, of course, and you know all of the uh, the the white people now uh, that once you know say, oh no. Weed is legal. You get arrested. Blah blah blah. Even they are opening up dispensaries and have a hand in getting some of this money that's coming in now from legalized cannabis. And it's so very sad. And so, what's going into these black communities? The brown communities. It's not the same. It's not the same. So it is altering the minds. It's altering the personalities of people that constantly smoke it. And it's even, uh, there's one out there that, uh, a few out there that people that smoke it regularly, you see them one uh, one month, the next month you see them, they like them went from uh, maybe 170 pounds to 120 pounds. And it looked like they on crack, but they're smoking weed. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. what the heck? 
So and that was something that they that created. That, that was something that the doctors created because I seen an article. I seen an article about it. They they tried to take something out, and instead mm-hmm. of them taking it out, they took an increase. They increased whatever they were supposed to be removing, and mm-hmm. they tried to take it out. They they said they tried to take some. They it was on 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 one of them little um, news things that I be getting these <laughs> alerts. I, oh, I was okay. all kind of little alerts, and and I was yeah. reading that. But yeah, you they it's it's all kind of stuff going on. It right is, and, and it's so sad. And then they have the you know the cannabis that uh, they'll say, okay, well here we have this CBD oil. And this is going to be good for arthritis. Get rid of your pain, or this is going to help you with your depression and all of that stuff. It's there. It's, it's still a drug, okay? Because those those CBD oils that they sell, uh, they take some of the oil from the marijuana, from the cannabis, and use it. But then they also add chemicals in it, and you know, and they sell. Well, this is one hundred percent pure, and this is going to help you. But yet, uh, people become still become addicted to that stuff, and. Um, they can become addicted to marijuana by using the CBD oils if they're taking them internally. And it's so sad. And for the most part, like when I was coming up, marijuana was not addictive. It was something you smoke. And I'm going to say, yeah, I used to smoke weed. Okay. I used to smoke weed. (laughs) So uh, when I was young, I used to smoke weed and it was nothing that was addictive. What we did when I was younger it gave you the munchies, want you to eat all the time, you know, it gave you the munchies and it also made you laugh and nice and happy and cracking up over a stupid stuff, anything, you just laughing. And uh, nowadays I look at people I'm like, whoa, look at them. You know, they getting skinny, they crazy, they addicted to weed. It's not natural because that's not what uh, marijuana is supposed to do to people. And, um, you know, it's such a sad thing. But then again, they put the wrong kind or the, the kind that's messed up to mess you up in black communities. And, and it's so very sad. And you have all these black uh, guys still out there selling these drugs to their communities, to their friends, family and whoever uh, to make money. And it's sad. And, and it's like, you know, we are slowly killing ourselves or should i say they are slowly killing our people because they're selling them drugs you know drugs that is actually destroying the brain and you know back in the day they used to say you know marijuana fries the brain so how something that fried the brain back in the 70s and 80s how is it now in two th- in the 2020s it's helping the brain you know i i don't get that to me something's wrong with that um and, and it's crazy it's crazy um but when i was talking about the uh wrongful convictions and all of that um i was um i wanted to say that um now since i have uh become a part of uh the o and e uh network o and e dynasty um and because i became the host and anchor of news forum and uh I was at first doing like every week I did like a different topic. I did uh, stories on gentrification. We talked about gentrification. Uh, We talked about uh, uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus. And I talked about how um, the government was taking the homeless people off the streets and using them as guinea pigs to uh, find a vaccine. And, um, then I talked about the education system and I talked a lot about the corrupt government. And then I had a wrongful conviction case on. And from that first wrongful conviction case, it was like, oh boy, everybody else that had people wrongfully incarcerated wanted to come on the show. And then I started having more wrongful conviction cases on on the show. And now... That's all I have on the show is every single week is wrongful convictions. And it's just such an eye opener to the corruption in this country. And some people still may not believe that this country is as corrupt as it is. But people, you better wake up and as they say, smell the coffee, because this is a very corrupt country that we live in. This country called the United States of America, 
supposed to be home of the free and land of the brave or whatever it might be the other way around. Um, but it's not, okay? It's a lot of brave people out there. But when you show your bravery, okay, sometimes they'll lock you up, okay, for being so brave, okay? Um, and they'll try to muzzle you. They don't want the truth to come out. And it's so very sad. So how is that land of the free where you can't really do anything? Your, your freedom is being taken away from you for decades. Uh, your freedom of speech is sometimes being muzzled as well, especially like on Facebook. People get in Facebook jail for putting up a positive post, or, you know, posts that make people think and, you know, posts that'll, you know, bring a dialogue or a debate and, you know, Facebook will take stuff down and, and, you know, it's so very sad, but that's not freedom of speech because freedom of speech, we're supposed to be allowed to speak whatever we want. Freedom of the press. Okay. As journalists, we're supposed to be able to write whatever we want and without it being censored, without it being muzzled, without it being taken down. So, you know, they're not allowing this country, the citizens of this country to really be free okay there's a, a a rule for everything and you know if you break certain rules then you suffer the consequences that's not freedom you know hmm. how is it that one person can sit up here and make a law and it applies to the whole country you know just because they said well this is what i want to be law because we have to look back way back when when they first <laughs> made up all these different laws and these states all these states can actually set their own guidelines for crimes in their states mm -hmm. where when i believe that that should be universal it should be on a federal level if we're supposed to be the united states of america then all of the states should have the same guidelines for crimes they should have the same type of sentencing and if you commit murder you get x amount of time if you do this you get this amount of time it should not be every state for themselves that's so very wrong you know, because you commit one crime in 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 uh, this state, and then maybe you commit a crime in Texas, totally different sentencing, totally different uh, penalties, and you know consequences, and that's wrong. So we're United States. That's not showing anything being united. That's division. That's the, a state that's divided. You know, a country that is divided. Anytime uh, each state can come up with their own laws. I don't think that it should be that way. It should be a uniform law. And that's something that they need to change. And, you know, uh, people won't stand up and speak up and, and fight for things that need to change in this country, Angela. And it, it's so very sad. And, you know, I've, I've always been uh, an outspoken person, a person that speaks her mind, and never allowed anybody to like make me bite my tongue, you know, but wow. my parents, okay? Uh, but anybody else and my teachers, but anybody else, you know, I never bite my tongue. I always speak what's on my mind. And if I don't see something that's right, I'm gonna speak up about it. And more people need to be like that and not afraid. But this is what the government wants people to do. They want people to fear them. And we can't walk in fear, y'all, because the word of God says God has not given me the spirit of fear and you know i don't know if y'all believe the word of god but i do and he said he's not giving us the spirit of fear but that of power of love and of a sound mind so you know a, a spirit of power you know I, and some people leave that part out but it's a spirit of power of love and a sound mind okay not walking in fear okay because man can't do anything to you that god does not allow OK, so we have to know that God is in control at all times and not fear what man can do to us. OK, mm -hmm. and the Bible says, if God before you who can be against you. OK, mm -hmm. and we know that people are always going to come up, up against us and try to try us. OK, no matter how good you do. OK, no matter how good of a person you are, no matter how compassionate and kind and loving you are. Guess what? Somebody is mm -hmm. still out there hating you. OK, if somebody is still out there criticizing you, talking about you like a dog can't stand your guts and you haven't done nothing to them. OK, <laughs> but that's life. And that's what they did to Jesus. And of course, 
for we to think that people won't do that to us, okay? And we okay. have to realize this and still do what you're doing and don't allow people to, as they say, get you off your square, okay? Or, or take you there, back there to the life that you or the person you used to be, okay? You can't let people do that. But the enemy will try you. He will try you time and time again. He'll make you want to stop doing the good that you're doing. But God say, don't stop the good that you're doing because the good that you're doing is needed. It's necessary. It's helping other people. And, you know, this is God. I'm sorry, but this is just God just seeing stuff right now. And I don't know why he's going there, but he's going there for someone. You can't <laughs> stop. You got to continue. You got to continue. Perseverance is the key. You know, if, if if back in the Bible days, if everybody gave up when things got rough, guess what? They would have stayed in the same predicaments they were in. So we have to be steadfast and strong and believe that, you know, God has it in control no matter what the it is. He has it in control. I mean, he has everything in control. And sometimes you can't see it, but you better believe it because faith is what? The substance of things hoped Hope for. for. Evidence, Evidence of things of not seen. Thing. We can't see it with these, okay? So we sometimes we got to close our eyes and not look at everything in the natural. You know, you're looking at one thing and then you can't see what God is trying to show you because you're too busy looking in the natural. That's why we got to tap into the inner spirit. If you have God on the inside, I beseech you, brethren and sisters, okay, to tap in the inside, on the inside to the spirit of God, okay? And then God will open up your eyes. And as some people say, you know, you got that third eye. Yeah, God will open up that third eye, okay, which is his spiritual eye. And you will be able to see things that are not there yet. But you see it, okay? Because God is showing you your future. And he can show you your future if you tap into him, okay? He will show you your future. He'll show you just what you're supposed to be doing. And guess what? He'll show you that, yes, you are in order. Or he will show you, no, right now you're out of order. And then show you how to get in order and tell you what to do to get in order. And when you see in the spirit, God will show you some stuff, okay? And you will begin to call those things into existence, okay? Those things that are really not here right now, you'll be able to call them into existence, okay? Because you're seeing them as if they're there, but they're not. And you can speak it because our words have so much power, Angela. <laughs> and I always like to say, whatever you say after I am, hmm. that is is what you're calling and speaking into your life. So don't ever say, I am sick. No, say I'm healthy. I because am healed. You say ah. I'm healthy, I am healed. Then guess what? You keep speaking that. It will come into existence. But if you yeah. keep saying I'm sick, I'm in pain, and, and, you know, and all these negative things, you're going to remain that way. So say I'm I'm happy, even at, even if you're depressed, angry, say, I am happy and feel it and mean it. Like, I am happy. And the more you will say it, the more that happiness will come over you, the more that joy will come over you. I am full of joy. I'm filled with peace. I have the peace of God. You know, God has my mind covered. I am not tormented, you know, and we have to speak those things. And then those things will then become us and it become a way of life. But you see, the devil, he doesn't want people to speak those things. He wants people to speak everything negative about themselves. And we cannot do that. So if y'all wake up in the morning, wake up happy and speak some positive affirmations over your life. And before you go to bed, and sometimes even during the middle of the day, you got to start speaking those affirmations because the enemy going to try to come all day long. He's going to try to annoy, nag, and do things to get you off your cue, okay? But you can't allow it to happen. That's why we have to stay uh, prayed up because there's always a constant battle between the spirit and the flesh. And we live wow. in the fleshly body. 
And we have to learn how to tap into the spirit and tune out all of those obstacles that are constantly surrounding us. And it, it's just so crazy because um, people don't realize, Angela, that all day long, there's a constant battle between good and evil, the flesh and the spirit, between angels and demons. And, you know, and some people used to look at it and be like, I was crazy. I tell them, you know, all while we're walking all down and down the street, everywhere we go, the angels and the demons, they're constantly fighting right above it. They're constantly fighting, battling. And, you know, people can't see it, but it's happening day in and day out, 24, 7, 365, y'all. They, demons and angels are fighting, fighting. We all have angels assigned to us. And then there are demons that will uh, try to attack us. And the angels that God has sent to protect us, they're constantly fighting on our behalf. And we don't even know it. We don't even realize it. And, you know, sometimes when, if you ever, uh, I, this happened to me a lot, you know, especially sometimes if I'm trying to get somewhere and all of a sudden something happened and, I'd be like, oh, my God, you know, maybe a traffic jam or, you know, I got delayed somehow because uh, whatever may happen that, that caused me to be delayed. And then I'm like, oh, man, this don't make no sense. And then God would turn around in a few minutes or whatever, however long. But that same day showed me why I was delayed and I was delayed to protect me from being <laughs> in that car accident or being shot, you know, and mm, 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 God will protect you. He will protect you. So I, right, have I just got to say something mm. because you said you didn't know why you were saying this at the beginning when you started saying all of this that you're saying. Yeah. But I, I, I just want to tell you that you are just confirming some things that took place just on yesterday. Oh just wow! Took place on last night, um, wow. even on the clubhouse. I, I we had a young lady that's been coming to our clubhouse because we do a clubhouse on domestic violence. Okay. Um, I say the young lady I was telling you about that was acquitted of murder. She co-hosts with me. I have a guy that has been on both sides of domestic violence. He co-hosts with me, and three weeks ago we had a Caucasian lady come in out of um, Baltimore, Maryland area. And um, there were some concerns and we were concerned because she hadn't been back in and like she had some, some, but she popped the question last night with mm -hmm. pop the, when, when she was like, I, I have faith, but I just can't, I just can't, I, I just can't see. And when is it just, so my thing was, I remember when I was laying in the hospital for 21 days mm. and they told me that. I had six months of recovery to go through. And wow. all I could think about was the six months of recovery and how hard it was going to be for me to get up and down and, you know, me not being able to do this and me not being able to do that. But don't you know, every day mm -hmm. I would tell myself tomorrow is going to be a better day because tomorrow yeah. I'm not going to feel like I felt yesterday. And every day, it seemed like I got more strength. I got more strength. And when they said six mm. months, it looked like I was back up and at it in no time. When All they right. done told me it was going to be well into January. Because if 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 you trace it, it was right before um, I moved to Myrtle Beach before the doctors actually released me. But wow. let me tell you what these people told me I could do. They told me I could have sex. Now you're gonna tell me I can have sex, but I can't go to the I, I can't go back to work. What sense does that make? <laughs> you uh, oh, you you goodness. you telling me <laughs> now I just had I, I just had surgery now. You you just you just went up in me and took something out of me and cut and and, and cut and removed some stuff. Now mm. you telling me I I can't go back to work, but I can have sex. The devil is a lie. Yeah, right. The devil is a lie. But you, you said that you didn't know why you were saying that. Um, so on October the 31st, I got inducted into um, this sorority. Okay. Um, it was a um, Christian, quote unquote, Christian sorority. Um, All right. On November the 5th, I got removed. I got kicked out of this sorority. 
I got no phone call. I got no text message. I got no email. Yes. I got no nothing. But remind you, two days prior to this, I received an award. Me and three other people received the award. So okay. that morning, I got an inbox from a person telling me that they had been kicked out. So here I am encouraging them and, and comforting them, not knowing that I had been kicked out myself. Wow. I got kicked out along with two other people at the same time. But then didn't realize why I couldn't figure out why I got kicked out. But then when mm. I got the text message from the young lady and she told me what the young lady said to her was the reason why she got kicked out. She got kicked out because the young lady told her that she was invite she was inviting people to groups and she felt like mm. her motive was not a pure motive for being a part of the organization. Now, quote me if I'm wrong. <clears throat> Most people that join sororities and fraternities join sororities and fraternity for the sisterhood, the brotherhood, mm -hmm. the networking, and the collaborating. Am I not right? Or right. Yeah. Okay. And, and she said that this young lady was, she had alternative motives, but she all she was doing was bringing people together. Well, anybody that know me, they, they have labeled me affectionately as a queen of collaboration. So I don't know how you thought I was not going <laughs> to continue to collaborate, network, right. and partner. Right. And right. then you go one further and you name me. This this is what you name me. And I'm going to tell you how, how, how God works. Because let me tell you something. She didn't even know the relevance of the numbers that she was giving me because she gave me the number 11. And, mm -hmm. I, and I did some research on that number 11. That number 11 means enlightening. Oh, yeah, that number 11 is but powerful. She, That's why I chose me, 11, 11, 11. But she <laughs> 11, gave 11. me that number 11, right? Okay. Now, mm. remind you, my birthday is April 1st. Now, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm turning 47 years old. Now, you add four and seven together. What you get? Mm-hmm. Got that 11. 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. She don't know what she did. She just lit a fire up under me because I'm getting ready. On my birthday, I'm releasing a um a book. It's called Broken to be mended and molded in his image. I am All right. say I am. I am him yes. and he is I. Because you said yes. something that I've been telling people, and I'm not gonna let it go. Because if you go over to Genesis two and seven, he said he breathed the breath of life into us. And mm -hmm. if he breathed the breath of life into us, it is already in us. Before you was even conceived in your mother's womb, before you was even thought of, before you was even formed, he breathed the breath of life into you. But So you had life before you was even thought about, baby. Yes. Exactly. And then you said something else, power. I've been on that word for, for going on a year now. Mm. He said, position yourself. To be an yes. overcomer by being yes. a, willing, a willing vessel to empower others through your resilience. Mm. But first you got to be a servant so you can operate in the powers. And then you touched on that thing. I'm telling you, people don't understand. You want to heal? You got to stop allowing hindrance. You know yes. they are here. You know they come. It, it, anything that to keep you from operating in the spirit because they want us to operate in the flesh. And anything yes. that you do from operate in the spirit is mm -hmm. that hindrance. It can be people, it can be places, and it can be things. You got to right. not allow those things to stop your present being. You yes. got to stop allowing your ego to be more than what who you are. Yes. Know who you are. That's right. And how you find out who you are, you spend time with him and allow him to nourish you, allow him to grow you, allow him mm -hmm. to break you if you need to be broken, and allow That's him right. to bend and mold you. I'm telling you, I had to go through that, and this was a process even with that because I didn't understand what I had done. I thought mm -hmm. I had done something. I thought okay. it was something that, but I said, you know what? I cannot, I, I am who I am. I yeah. change is not. This journey that I'm on, I said, the word of God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. I said, you don't know the mantle that is on my life. The mantle that is on my life, I have to let people know that they have purpose. I have to know, let people know yes. that they just get dropped out of the sky. That it's something that they're supposed to be doing here on this earth. It, it, it's, it's bigger than a radio show. It's bigger than these little things that I'm doing every day. It's bigger than this. But if yeah, I am not right. obedient 
in allowing uh-huh. the people the opportunity to come on here and do what he said to allow them to do, uh-huh. then I'm stopping what he's what, what he's allowing to happen. People don't understand. Yes. You just open your mouth, he'll speak for you. I go back oh, and I, yes. look at, I, I, I look at some of my lives and I look at some of these recordings and listen to some of these things and I'd be like, Lord, who was that? <laughs> I'm yeah. like, why? Where did all that come from? <laughs> yes. But he will do it. Yes. If yes, you he will. allow him. And people think you got yes, to be too. this way, you got to be that. I'm tired of all these holier than thou people. Oh, but I'm tell people yeah. right now, I, I'm a believer. I, I I make mistakes. I fall. But you know what? Mm-hmm. I don't keep I, I don't I don't stay down. Because right. I know what he's done for me. Ain't nothing nobody's told me. These are, That's experiences. Right. These are things that I've experienced. Because when I couldn't see the light of day, he brought me out of the dark into the light. He yes. did. It. Not nobody. Didn't nobody do it. Because when people was telling me to, to leave my domestic violence, they had me. They had me. God put me in a wilderness. He put me mm. in a place where I was homeless, sleeping in my car. And didn't it couldn't depend on nobody. He wouldn't even wow. allow my nephew to help me. Mm. I had to go through that for a minute. Wow. Because if I didn't do it, I couldn't tell nobody because I'd never been through nothing like that before. How could I tell somebody it was okay that you can get through this if mm-hmm. I never if I never endured That's right. That's right. And yeah. then you have to be careful what you ask for because I always say I I, I want to feel the goodness. I want to feel what everybody else feels. They talk about the goodness of God and they talk about it and I never <laughs> had that experience. And boy, <laughs> when I said it, when I opened my mouth, I began to go through things. But he reminded yeah. me December of 2012 before mm-hmm. I started going through all of this because I've been through some things, but I didn't really know what they were. Okay. But in 2012, he allowed me to go through some things. But before I started going through those things, he said he reminded me that I had a purpose. He reminded yes. me of Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yes, and I and I left. Left to it. He 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 told me to hold on to that, no matter what, hold on to it. Mm-hmm. Did I know that I was gonna go through domestic violence? Did I know I was gonna almost lose my life? Did I know that people were gonna drag me through the mud and try mm-hmm. to take my projects and try to take the name that I have? Because anybody that knows mm-hmm. me, I'm a I'm, I'm a person of my word. If I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. Yes, yes. And when people try to take your words and they try to take mm-hmm. they try to take your character and drag it through the mud. Yes, but I tell you, the the word of God is true, and you have to stand on His word, and you have to remind Him of His word, because He said, "No weapon formed against you shall prosper." That's and right. Tongue that rises should be condemned. You yes. have to understand that these weapons are going to come, but That's you have right. the power to not allow them to prosper. He's everything that you need is already on the inside of you when He breathed that breath of life in you. But it's up mm-hmm. to you to move out the way. You move out the way and allow him to be. But if you ain't putting nothing in to activate that's on the inside, because he'll right. sit there and he'll be like, okay, well, let me see what my daughter going to do. Let me see if my yeah. daughter know my word. Let me see if my daughter know who I am. Right. But right. if you can't give him none of his word, that's you right. can't give him nothing. You ain't doing nothing in the community. You ain't touching nobody's life. Right. Exactly. You could have said, forget them people. I ain't mm-hmm. got nobody incarcerated. Mm-hmm. And you could have said, forget them. I'm not finna be going yeah. to back, going to back for them for what? Yeah. Ain't nobody, mm. ain't, ain't nobody thinking about me. But you <laughs> didn't do that. Right. You didn't do that. Mm-hmm. We got yeah, so many people like that that's see a stuff. You see mm. stuff going on, but won't even open your mouth. Won't even right. speak on the subject. He be no delivered you from something. Be no save your life. Be no do no something for you, and you won't yeah. even acknowledge it. And now he wants you to do is acknowledge it, That's and you don't right. even realize how many doors can open. Did I realize that I would be speaking in Dubai? Did I realize I'd be speaking in the UK? Did I realize that I would be partnering with people all over Africa right. and in 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 Virgin Islands and in Australia and different places yeah. places I ain't never been. Places I ain't never heard of. I'm talking about I get invites to from, from people that I ain't never heard of. A lady won a book to a, a place called New Ghani something. That, I ain't never heard of that. I tried to Google okay. it. And, and I had to fill out an international form to send the paper, to, to send the book to her, <laughs> an international wow. form. I never heard of it. But mm. 
the 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 know that people you're able to connect with people like that who me mm -hmm. a little old girl from the country one way in one way out people <laughs> see it on my live right now people can't they 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 get they, they, they say you you own that time child. i know i'm country they tell me you on that trying to sound white no i'm not trying to sound white as country as i am i know you can't say i'm trying to sound white <laughs> but that's what they say and that's the, that's oh just the thing but I just decided that, you know what? I don't want to work in a mill. I don't want to work in a plant. I don't want to work in a factory mm -hmm. because life. there's more to life than that. Mm -hmm. And that's what exactly. they had showed people in my community that that's what, what is that what is only thing that you do. Because a lot of my family, they came out of high school, they went and they start working in these mills and that's where they retired from. A lot wow. of 20, 30 years working in these mills, bad feet, bad hands, can't hardly stand yes. up. You know all that. I didn't want that. Mm. I, I did not want that. Mm. I did not. I did not want that. I said, you know what? I I don't care. I don't care if I don't graduate. I don't want that. I'm going to school. I don't care if I don't graduate. I'm going to school. Yes. yes. I'm gonna do something yes. different. Mm. I want something different. And just yeah. to show it, I stepped out. The ones behind me began to step out. My nephew okay. graduated. My nephew right. already graduated from college, and All he right. on, he walked across the stage in in less than in less than what six weeks with his All master's right. degree. Oh, that's and awesome! He in, awesome. In, 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 in the navy. Awesome. So I, you know what I said? I'm 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 breaking this generational curse where they yes. say we ain't got nobody. We know we got. Mm -hmm. Not only that, I got a cousin that um graduated and she she pledged Delta. I got another cousin that graduated. He he um pledged Omega and um okay. he got a degree in chemistry and biology. Yeah, all I right. We break that. We breaks that curse. Yes, on yes. both sides of my family, we breaks that all curse. Right. And I said I'm gonna do it double time for both. Yes, of them. I yes. said I represent for curse both. Breaker. They will not say. They yes. will not say. I say That's anything awesome. attached, I, anything attached to my blood. I don't care if you ain't got nothing but an a, a inch, a tinch. If you attached to my bloodline, baby, you are a change agent, and change mm -hmm. comes with you. Yes, we exactly. are the change that we desire. Oh yes, we are the change. To me. Anybody yes. that's attached to me, I tell, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't care. They can get tired of me, but the L three, we moving in. Learn, love, and lead because you'll yes. never get too old to be taught something you're never too that's old right. to learn and in that's everything right. you should move in love because love draws mm -hmm. love covers yes. the most people sin. one of the greatest commandments say love thy neighbor no, that's love right. thy brother and sister as thy love right. thyself mm -hmm. yes love love is is very powerful and it needs to be more of it in the world today especially in this country um but it's not and you know it's so very sad so very sad. Now, um, before I forget, I, I just want to um, share with everybody um, on Sundays, you can tune into News Forum on Sunday nights uh, and listen to some of these wrongful convictions that will have you like be like, whoa. And, you know, and it's real life. It sounds like something in the movie, a lot of these cases, but it's not. It's real life. Um, and you can tune in to that by dialing 516-453-9133 every Sunday night at 9.30 p.m. And uh, Angela put the uh, the link to the show on. They want to catch your you archive. Out, you can check out the archives. Um, and then on uh, Wednesday, every Wednesday night, uh, Cries of Innocence from Behind Prison Walls. And Angela put the, the page that that comes on right up there on the Mike Test TV page on Facebook. That comes on 8 o'clock every Wednesday night. And then there are other podcasts throughout the week as well. So if you go on that page, you can check out all the different podcasts. And you'll be like, whoa. And, you know, I fight for gentrif uh, against gentrification and in Philadelphia because it's being totally gentrified and it's so sad. And right now we're fighting for... Um, a lot to be saved behind uh, historical uh, exonery Vincent Moto's home, where he built a stage back there um, with him and his brothers and their friends. They were all musicians. And that stage is still back there. And mind you, he was incarcerated wrongfully for 10 and a half years, came back. That whole playground was gone. No more swings, no more sliding boards, no more anything for kids back there. 
and you know the city of philadelphia corrupt corrupt okay because that was a city property and they they took in they gave it to a couple that were supposed to build a performing arts center that couple never did they both passed away the city then sold a lot to a top-rate developer and he put a beer garden back there okay it's supposed to be a playground for kids he put a beer garden back there and had all these i'm just gonna say all these white people came into a black community hundreds of them back there into a beer garden walking around drinking beer but yet the black people in the community can't even drink beer on their steps so now what kind of crap is that to see all these people in this little park drinking beer and it's legal and, and it's you know all walking all the beer. yeah it's happening and in making Atlanta. all that noise and and everything so i helped them fight against that that beer garden it was done away with that developer then sold the property to another top rate developer hmm. for, i think 2.75 million dollars okay and he's trying to build a five story 67 hmm. unit apartment complex back there and the residents don't want it and, and the people you know, in the why probably see, can't afford to pay for it either right they probably can't so afford to the pay thing. the rent that he want to charge yeah well he's trying he's trying to target the uh white young college students okay so uh, the area is very accessible to center city philadelphia downtown philadelphia very accessible to all of the major colleges and so they can either ride these little blue bikes they got out here uh hop on a bus or even walk to work so it's very accessible so that's what he's targeting and he has brought up so much property in south philadelphia and constantly building doesn't care about the community so that's a, another mission that i'm on right now helping that community fight to save that park and to get the city to either buy it back or give them some other property and utilize that park and area back there for concerts with the sages and also for um vincent moto to build a music school which what is what he wanted to do because he teaches uh drums piano guitar uh, and bass free to children and um so we have been doing that for a few years before, before covid hit uh going into different uh recreation centers and different things like that but he wants to build a free and again free y'all free music school okay and they need to give that park to him called vincent moto uh community park and free music school uh this is what the city needs to do so that's what we're fighting for and another thing we're fighting about that still has to do with this gentrification stuff is on washington avenue anybody that lives in philly you know washington avenue is this big street with five lanes okay and a lot of traffic a lot of track the trailers come through there because that is an industrial area and so all these uh business supply companies have deliveries every day and they are trying to take that from being five lanes to being one lane each way so that they can build more bike lanes and that's insane you know they do all of this dumb stuff and people stand by and let it happen but when i find out about these issues i help i help i help i will be a voice and come out there and uh expose all that stuff so uh if any issues are going on in your community and you're in the philadelphia area you can let me know pick up the phone and call me my number is 844-642-8378 again that's 842 I mean, not 842, 844-642-8378, extension 888. And it's 844-MIC-TEST, T-E-S-T. And y'all call me Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 7 a.m. Oh, I'm talking about 11 a.m. to 7 a.m. No, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., y'all. <laughs> and um, if you uh, have somebody that's wrongfully incarcerated and want to be a guest on any of the podcasts, I welcome you. You call me at that number. Now I, I want to do. I do want to say something about the number eleven, Angela. Uh, you know, because you asked, you know, gave me like a list of days to pick. I'm like, oh, eleven, eleven. That's a good one. So eleven, eleven at eleven. Okay, it was uh, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do eleven, eleven at eleven a.m. So we got the those 
those 11s all across. And the number 11 is definitely a, a, a very powerful number. Um, it represents uh, so many different things, intuition, creativity, uh, power, manifestation. Um, and that number, it it's like, it, it also, you know, like the ones, you know, represents like infinity, okay, as well. So it's an infinite number and it is so very powerful. And if we look at 11, 11, and I don't know about you, Angela, but sometimes, you know, I, I, I wake up, I'll look at my phone and it, like almost every day, when I pick it up and look at it, it's 11, 11. And I mean, I get up at that time every day, but I could be doing anything. And then all of a sudden I pick up my phone to go on my phone. I look at the time like, whoa, it's 11, 11. Mine is always my birthday. Mine wow. is always my birthday, 401. Every time wow. I look at the clock, every time I can look at, at, at the clock, like I, uh -huh. was, I, I walked into the, um, the kitchen and looked at the microwave yesterday and it was 401. But it, it's like with me, it's 401. I can get in my car sometime and look at and, and turn my car on and it'll be 401. Mm, yeah, it's always yeah. that that with me with that with numbers like that is always my birthday. It's always the fall. Wow. That's interesting. And so yeah, mine is always eleven eleven and um four forty four. And it is always like the numbers that are always like, you know, consecutive. Uh, 555 <laughs> and, and 333. Those are ones that always come up. But that 1111 is like on a daily basis. And um, so here is what uh, 1111 uh, means. I'm just going to read a couple of these meanings. And, you know, y'all can Google these things and it'll show you like a list of different things for like different numbers. If you are like Angela says, it's, her birthday comes up all the time. And if you're constantly seeing a certain pattern, or certain numbers come up, Look and see, because every number has a meaning. Every number has a meaning. So uh, 1111, a spiritual meaning for that, um, it means your goals and dreams are manifesting at the speed of light. The speed of light. Wow. I need that. <laughs> the speed of light. Seeing, repeating, angel number. Okay, so 1111 is called an angelic number. It's an angelic number. And it's a sign that you're on the right path. You're on the right path for what you're supposed to be doing. And um, now this particular one, I'm just reading this one for the first time. Okay. I've never seen this one before. Um, and so it says these numbers and you're seeing them repeated everywhere. You're not going crazy. And it's not a coincidence. Take this as a literal sign from your angel's that the universe uh, of the universe and they're trying to get your attention. So they're trying to get your attention, which means God's trying to get your attention with these clues and messages. And they can show up, like I've said, mine show up on my phone all the time. Okay, but they can show up on a license plate, a road sign, okay, a phone number. It could show up anywhere. You know, you might go to the grocery store and then all of a sudden, whoa, my bill came up to $11.11. You know, anything. It could be any type of situation. And we have to definitely take notice of that. And it is definite power. And it is reminding us to definitely maintain the positive outlook. Like I said, I'm a positive person. So we want to maintain a positive, optimistic attitude. And guess what? You'll receive all your aspirations. And also, uh, for a rule of thumb, um, when you see your back, okay, to back, and you see it back to back and you ever be back to back against the wall sometime and you see this number 1111 it just reminds you okay that you're strong okay you're strong wow. you have power and we can manifest things into our lives we can definitely manifest and it all deals with the mind so we have to really really condition our minds Think on the things of God. You know, he has power to overcome, to help you overcome and any situation. And we just have to realize it, but we have to really condition our minds and not allow certain things to go into our hearing, certain things to go into our vision, like stuff we watch, stuff we hear on the radio and 
conversations that we shouldn't even be a part of, you know, and we have to sort of like remove ourselves from certain people. Okay. And I understand that some of y'all, you know, you, you really love certain people and they could be friends, but a lot of times your worst enemies are those that are in your own family. Okay. And sometimes you have to remove yourself. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. But there are some family members, you know, God is saying some of y'all really need to really distance yourself from some family members that mean you no good at all. They want to see you fail. They don't want you to be happy. They don't want you to be successful. And they are jealous of you. They envy you because of all you've been through and you're still standing. They envy you so much and you love them. And you cannot see what they're trying to do to you. And this is for somebody because if there is somebody that is somebody that's really close that you love so much and they want to see you fail. They want to see you suffer and you don't see it because a lot of times we can't see it when it's a family member. We just think that our family loves us and it should be that way, but it's not that way. It's not that way. Look at what Joseph's brothers did to him. Okay. Joseph's brothers put him in a pit because they were jealous of him. They left him there to die. And although they left him there to die, guess what? God rose him up from that pit. And Joseph, you know, he became great. And those same brothers that threw him in the pit, he still looked out for them once they realized he was in the palace. Okay. And he had to give them food and take care of them. And he didn't remain bitter. So when you find out that that particular person in your family is the one that's been causing all the hell in your life, undercover, God is about to bring that and you're going to see. And when you do, God is saying, don't be bitter. Still love them. Love them from a distance though. Forgive them but love them from a distance because some people never change. So even when they're exposed, they're not going to change. They're still going to have that hatred and that envy, that jealousy. They're not going to change, but you have to change by distancing yourself from them. And, you know, it's so sad, but you know, this is real. And, and somebody needed that because you're going through some stuff and wondering, wow, well, where is this coming from? What, how is this happening? And sometimes y'all got to be quiet and not tell all your plans and all your dreams and hopes and aspirations and the visions that God has given you. Some things are not meant for people to hear. It's only meant for them to see it when it manifests. So you don't want to share your plans and goals with everybody. And sometimes with nobody. Just do like God said in Habakkuk 2 too. Write the vision down and make it plain. Okay? And so... That way you can work on your goals and when it manifests, then people will see. Okay. But some of y'all done blab your mouth too much to people because you're excited about what's about to happen and what God showed you and what you were trying to do. And they will try to block it at every chance they get, you know, just like Joseph, he told his brothers, all his dreams, all his dreams. It was him being over his brothers, you know, and then the father turned around and give him the coat of many colors. And that just even put more hatred, you know. So sometimes we have to be quiet, walk in silence and let God reward you openly and show everybody what he is doing as it manifests itself without us speaking anything about it. And, um, you know, I've learned that through the years to um, not share my dreams and my visions and, and some goals. Some I will share and most of them I won't. I'll just allow God to just manifest it because we have a lot of haters out there, Angela. Okay. A lot of people that's hating and especially when people are doing good things, but people not hating when somebody doing something bad. So for those y'all that have haters, just know you're doing something good because that's the only time the enemy comes in like a flood. Okay. It's when we're doing good, when we're doing good and 
they don't want to see good be done. So God is good and God is love. And we need to walk in love and we need to walk in God. And um, this is really awesome, Angela. And um, I, one other thing I just want to share real briefly. I am a naturopathic doctor, y'all. And um, it's like every time I come on any of your shows, I never really talk about that part. We always uh, like it always go wherever, you know, God takes it. So, you know, but um, I am a naturopathic doctor. So if any of you are suffering from any type of ailments, it could be pain. It could be uh, asthma, any type of respiratory problem, any blood disorder, uh, cancer, anything from A to Z. God has placed an herb on this planet for us to utilize. And he gave us the herbs to heal our bodies, not the man-made completely induced medications. They don't heal, but they do kill. And they kill you slowly. You never get cured. You never get rid of any disease from any of this man-made stuff. All you do is get sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker. And then you eventually do what? Die with the same illness and even more that they've caused you to have. So if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired and want to get well and stay well and do something about it, y'all need to give me a call and I will put you on a natural health regimen, which will consist of herbs. God created them. Okay. hundred percent natural, no side effects. Um, and you don't, you can't OD on it. Okay. So if you don't, uh, if you take too many and it's okay. If you don't remember what you took something in the morning or not, and you, and you say, oh, I better not take, I don't remember, so I better not take none. You don't have to worry about that with the herbs. Um, you can take them and you will get well and you will stay well. And guess what? That's guaranteed. As long as you follow the program, you will get well and you will stay well. I've seen people uh, with cancer, okay, become cancer free. Asthma, asthma free. Diabetes, no more diabetes. And for all you di diabetics out there, please stop. Okay, taking all that, uh, those pills and those that are taking insulin, it will cut off your circulation and eventually your toes are going to turn black. They're going to talk about amputating your toe. After they do that, they're going to do the foot. After they do that, they're going to do part of your leg and they're going to keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting. And that is so very sad. So don't let that happen to you, especially those you are that are on dialysis not good they're taking out your blood okay and then putting the same blood again at the filter store too that's horrible okay and and then you're you're so weak afterwards some of you are weak for days and days and same thing with chemotherapy it kills your cells your good cells along with the bad ones and this is why it doesn't get rid of the cancer because you don't in the, have any more fighter cells anymore because it kills them off. And then they'll tell you, oh, well, right now you're, you know, you're cancer free. But then here it comes back again. That's because they'll say, oh, well, it's spread to here. Or they cut off one uh, breast of a woman. And they say, oh, it's spread to the next one. Got to take that one. It, it's not natural. And don't let them do that to you. Because God can heal you naturally without no radiation or chemotherapy, without any man-made chemicals. God can heal you with his all-natural herbs, and they work. I've been doing this since 1984, and I know it works, okay? It works. I've seen, I would say, thousands of people become healed and cancer-free, AIDS-free, diabetes-free. I don't care what it is. I've even seen women that could not conceive children. They had a hard time conceiving the baby and went to fertility clinics and still never conceived. And I put them on what God told me to put them on now. Because the very first woman, I didn't know. I was like, oh boy. Hmm. And, I, and God said, give her this, give her that, and tell her this, tell her that. I told her, I said, well, God said, your next baby. When you get pregnant, she kept getting pregnant and it was an ectopic pregnancy where the baby wasn't in the tubes. And so she kept miscarrying. And so I said, OK, well, here's what God told me to give you. And he said that the next when you conceive, you're going to carry the baby to term. And 
God said, tell her, I think it was like in December, God said, tell her in March, she will be pregnant in March. And so I gave her the herbs and told her what God said. March came every day in March. She called me. She's like, uh, Apostle, I, I'm not, I, I, I'm not pregnant yet. I just, I, I'm not pregnant. I said, well, how you know? She said, well, I did the pregnancy test. I'm not pregnant. I'm not pregnant. I'm like, okay, well, March not over yet. And, and so every day she called me. Well, I did another one. I'm not pregnant. I said, just stop doing it every day. I said, it will happen this month because that's what God said. And I'm a firm believer when God tell me something to tell somebody that it, it, it will come to pass. And so she kept calling every day. I'm like, oh, Lord, here she go again. And so then uh, the one day she called. And so God uh, already told me that, okay, she found out she pregnant. So I'm like, okay, hey. I said, you're pregnant now, huh? She's like, yeah. She said, yeah, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. And she was so excited. She carried the baby to term. And after that, she had two more kids. And so, you know, it was so awesome. So I seen uh, quite a few women that could not even conceive at all become pregnant without going to spend that uh, money. But some of them did spend money at fertility clinics, um, but it was a waste of money. And so you don't need no fertility clinic, y'all, because God got you, okay? He got what you need and way less than a fertility clinic, okay? And um, wow, now, Angela, I thank you so much. And I didn't talk the whole, whole, whole lot. <laughs> wow, we needed to hear a lot of this. Um, before we jump off, um, run through again how people can support you, how they can follow you, how they can tune into your your network, and how they can okay. uh, support you on O and E. Okay, yeah, I forgot to even say any of that stuff in the beginning. <laughs> I'd be just talking away. Um, again, I'm I'm Dr. Chinchilla Jonisi, y'all. And um, you can follow me on Instagram, which is at Princess Chinchilla. And, you know, spelled just like my name up there uh, with one L. And also on Facebook, my Facebook name is Chinchilla Jonisia, just as you see it there without the doctor in front. Um, my email address is Chinchilla Jonisia at Mike Test entertainment.com and uh my uh page on facebook the other page mike test entertainment tv that's the page where you can find all the podcasts and different things uh that we do and uh people that we advocate for and also uh on that page you can join right the wrong coalition or you can just uh put at the at sign right the wrong coalition and then the Right the Wrong Coalition page will come up and you can become a member if you're someone that believes in justice and, and seeing that uh, the injustices in this country must be made right. So that's why it's called Right the Wrong, to get them to right the wrong that they've done. And it can be for any type of reason, okay? Criminal justice issues, uh, these gentrification issues, uh, different things that you know, are going on in your communities that you want to see be made right, right the wrong. Uh, we also do Cries of Innocence from Behind Prison Walls podcast, Nightmares from Behind Prison Walls, um, uh, Voices of the Wrongfully Incarcerated, Voices of Change. So there are a lot of different podcasts that are on the Mike Test Entertainment TV's page. And then we have a Be a Voice rally, a Be a Voice tour, actually, uh, Criminal Justice Reborn which we believe that this criminal injustice system needs to be rebirthed one city at a time. And so we travel all over the country, uh, bringing the Be A Voice tour to different states and cities that need us to come there to fight for uh, the wrongfully incarcerated. So if you're in the state and you have a lot of wrongful incarcerations there and you want us to come hold one of those Be A Voice rallies, even if it's a lot of juvenile lifers in your state, um, we advocate for them as well. We advocate for uh, juvenile lifers that have, you know, the life without parole. They're in there for the rest of their lives. And it's very sad. Um, and juveniles are not, okay? They're not, or so I say children. You know, their minds do not develop until they're about 25 years of age, okay? So even like a 20-year-old that think they grown and grown, and when they get 21, they legal to do all this other stuff, drink and go to clubs, They still, their minds still aren't fully developed, okay? So, and people do change. So we advocate for them as well. Um, and then if you would like 
to uh, donate uh, to the work I do. And, you know, people have been asking like all the time, where can they donate? And I never have, I've never taken any donations yet. But guess what, y'all? I'm going to take some donations now because um, since I've been doing this uh, for the past year, day in and day out, advocating uh, daily for the wrongfully incarcerated, um, I've used like all of my funds, my savings, my money uh, from my business. Uh, that was a very flourishing business. And so I had a lot of money, you know, to, to spend. So I spent it on platforms. I spent it uh, buying everything we need, equipment for the rallies, uh, the canopies, the tents, uh, everything. Okay. And providing food and all of that. So I used all my money for all of those things. And I had it to use and didn't mind because it's for a good cause. But now, guess what, y'all? If ain't no money coming in and you constantly spending your own money, eventually your money is going to go zip. Okay. So oh, wow. guess what? My money done went zip. Like I have exhausted all my expenses. So I will gladly accept some contributions and donations, even if it's a dollar. Okay. Y'all can donate a dollar. A dollar a week, five dollars. If y'all want to do five dollars a month, you can be a one-time uh, donor, contributor, or you can donate monthly. However you see fit. If you appreciate uh, and you know believe in the work that I I do, and I definitely do it for the heart. I don't do it for no no pay or anything like that, um, because God has commissioned me to do this. But in order to continue, it's going to take some money. OK, because uh, Angela tell you like to do these podcasts. Guess what? We got to pay money. OK, we got to pay monthly, uh, uh, you know, fees to do podcasting. And so, you know, and we don't get paid to podcast. OK, I don't get paid to do this. And um, this is my life right now. 24 seven. This is what I do from the time I wake up. I wake up to phone calls from people in prison. I wake up to families calling and I do it all day long, constantly. I go to sleep thinking about these cases, dreaming about these cases and, and figuring out how I can help and get these wrongfully incarcerated people out of jail. And I want to continue to do this without having to go and get a nine to five job because then that's going to take away from what I am trying to do in my advocacy. And I don't want anything to take away from the advocacy because this is what God has commissioned me to do. And I want to continue to be faithful in doing it. So my cash app is dollar sign Chinchilla Jonesia, and that's a capital C and a capital J. That's it, dollar sign Chinchilla Jonesia. And then I also have Venmo, for those of you that don't have a, a, a cash app, my Venmo is, um, what is the Venmo? Oh, it's Chinchilla Jonesia at MikeTestEntertainment.com. So it's my email, Chinchilla Jonesia at MikeTestEntertainment.com. And so, you know, like I said, I welcome any amount, a dollar, a help. Okay. So, because we got to keep this uh, going because it's so many people to help. And now I, I am going to share with uh, all of you, uh, like, uh, one thing that I am going to be doing uh, beginning next month, I would love, and this is, you know, we have to see um, if people actually donate, but I would love to be able to do uh, wrongful conviction cases every single day. And that's because there's an overwhelming amount of people out there that are wrongfully incarcerated that need help. And their stories need to be told. So I want to be able to do it on a daily basis uh, on radio. So my Here's to Your Health uh, radio uh, uh, show, I have a Here's to Your Health radio show that airs on Saturdays uh, on Blog Talk Radio. And um, that's, what is it, 563, what is it? I can't remember the number now. <laughs> I can't remember the number. Okay, but um, it, it airs on Saturdays at 1.30. And um, I haven't been doing it for a couple of months because I've been busy doing these uh, wrongful conviction podcasts and, and everything. So what I would like to do is the wrongful conviction podcast every single day um, on a radio show and, um, and then keep the other podcast twice a week for the video podcast and maybe do that every day too. Um, but definitely 
to do it on radio every day because these stories need to be told because these people are innocent and they need to be heard. Their families need to be heard. And these unjust, corrupt officials within our government, they need to listen. They need to listen. So um, I would greatly appreciate um, your help. So you guys can help me, help us to help them, okay? And um, also, um, if you want to, uh, oh gosh, what is the site? Um, shucks. Uh, I can't remember the name of that site, but anyway, you do have um, uh, the uh, website, or no, that's the email there, info at uh, MikeTestEntertainment.com. And, um, you know, or it, how, how Angela has that, um, it could be uh, Chinchilla Jonesia at MikeTestEntertainment.com and uh, or be a voice at MikeTestEntertainment.com. OK, and you can reach me there. And that's the website. And right now the website is uh, being reconstructed because it used to be um, the website used to be geared to just entertainment like. You know, because that's what I used to do, uh, promote up and coming artists. Um, so it was an entertainment site with uh, singers and vocalists and uh, spoken word artists and dancers. That's what the site was about. It was a, a TV show. And that's what we did and showed off, uh, put on there all the different tours and gigs and different things like that. So God, you know, has changed that to be a platform for wrongful conviction. So we are revamping and reconstructing that website to um, coincide with what we're doing now with wrongful incarcerations and criminal justice. And um, I, I thank you, Angela. Thank you um, for stopping by um, today and sharing with us and giving um, those that support my platform an opportunity to find out who you are and exactly what you're doing because you never yes. know who may need your services. Um, may right. need your input or just may need your words of encouragement. So I thank yes. you for stopping yes. by today. And I yes. Oh, and I'm sorry. Transparent. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Can you um put up this other um that I was trying to think of the other site? Um, it's petitions, p e t i t i o n s dot net forward slash exonerated underscore not what? what part? Well, how much you got? What you got so far? You say petitions. Uh huh. Dot net underscore. Um, for no forward slash petitions dot net forward slash exonerated okay. underscore not underscore compensated. Oh, I was on right it. Spell that. Uh, E-X-O-N E-R-A T-E-D Okay. Underscore Not underscore compensated, and that's C O M P E N S A T E D. So it's petitions.net forward slash exonerated underscore not underscore compensated. And I urge and encourage and ask all of you to please go to that site and sign the petition. Make legislators listen here in the state of Pennsylvania so that they can pass a compensation bill for these exonerees here in the state of Pennsylvania that have spent decades upon decades behind bars wrongfully. And the state of Pennsylvania, they do not provide compensation. Again, Pennsylvania is only one of 13 states that do not compensate. And it's so very sad. So please sign that petition. When you go on that site, 
and they ask if you want to contribute or donate don't donate anything to that site because anything that's donated on that site it does not help any of the exonerees it doesn't go to anybody it, it goes to petitions.net okay so they don't help any exonerees so all we ask you to do is just go there and sign that petition and share it so others can sign that petition. It's very important. The Zonerees, they need help. They need help. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you. I want to thank you for um, all that you do, um, for being a voice for those that don't have a voice or for those that think that their voice is not being heard. So thank you yes. for you're um, welcome. what you're doing. And, you're welcome. Ah, one more thing, I am so sorry. Sunday, any of you that live in Pittsburgh, <laughs> We're going to be in Pittsburgh on, on Sunday. Um, there's an event um, there in Pittsburgh at um, Mama's house or the flyer will be on the, um, on the, on the uh, page. Um, but the event is going to be a, a really good event. Uh, there's some black farmers uh, that are going to be there. And so they're going to take us on tours of the farms and everything, showing people how and why that it's important for us as a people to start growing our own food. Um, there's also going to be um, a lot of advocates there uh, talking about mass incarceration, life without parole, uh, wrongful convictions, and compensation in the state of Pennsylvania. And I will be uh, moderating the wrongful conviction panel, and I will also be uh, presenting and facilitating the Be A Voice uh, Criminal Justice Reborn rally there. So uh, it, it's going to be really awesome, an awesome event. So those of you that live in Pittsburgh or nearby and you want to come, you know, it's free. So uh, come on and, uh, you know, learn about what's going on in this country. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by again. Um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Up Close and Personal with Angela on behalf of Aspiring Authors Magazine. I pray that you guys have been blessed on today. I hope that you have taken some of these amazing nuggets that she's dropped, some of this information that could be beneficial to your community to get out and do something, y'all. Make a difference. Be the change that you want to see. Chinchilla is definitely the change that she wants to see. I want you guys to go over to support her. We've shared her cash app. She shared her website, telephone numbers, links that you can connect with this amazing woman. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I love you. And guess what? There's nothing you can do about it. Until next time, be blessed.